During the summer and fall months, we track a lot of hurricanes and tropical storms around the southeastern U.S., but I received a question. What about us in the Pacific Northwest? Why don't hurricanes hit us? Well, there's one simple answer. We're much too cool for that, but we can actually expand on that and talk about just why we don't get these tropical cyclones anywhere near us in the great state of Washington, even though we're right next to the ocean. This is a map of water temperature. The uh, I guess deeper the reds, the warmer the waters. And this was a look at water temperatures early October. Water temperatures in this part of the ocean tend to be the warmest in August, September, and October. So it's no wonder why the peak of hurricane season here in the Atlantic is also August, September, and October. That's because the warm waters fuel the developing tropical cyclones. And it all comes down to thunderstorm activity. You ever notice here in western Washington, when we do have thunderstorms that develop, rains that also produce lightning and thunder, they tend to come when the weather's been warm and humid. That's because these storms generate or they take energy from the warm, humid weather. That warm and humid air rises into thunderstorms that can be vigorous to not only downpour, but create lightning and thunder. Now think of that same scenario, but over the Atlantic Basin, you have an unending supply of that warm, humid weather, day or night, because these water temperatures don't change much uh, between day or night as well. So you have an unending supply of heat and humidity, and if left unbothered, in other words, if jet stream energy can stay to the north, jet stream energy could interfere with a developing tropical cyclone. So if it stays to the north, you get basically a test bed, or actually I should say an incubation bed for developing tropical cyclones right here where you see all these deep brown and red colors. So this is a common formation zone for tropical cyclones during August, September, and October. And it's no wonder that these are the areas that tend to see hurricanes because when you add on top of that the steering flow, there tends to be a semi-permanent high pressure over the northern Atlantic. The flow in the atmosphere, uh, which basically steers these systems around, is clockwise. So with that flow, you tend to get developing systems get directed into Hispaniola, into Cuba, into the southeastern U.S., into the Gulf, and depending on the shape of this high and if a jet stream can kind of dig into it, you can get the storms hooking around to Florida from the back from the Gulf. So again, no wonder why these areas are prone to hurricanes. Now similarly, if we move into the Pacific, you also have very warm waters here. This is also a zone in the tropics where we commonly see tropical cyclones develop, and tropical cyclones Cyclones would include tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hurricanes. The thing is, uh, in the eastern Pacific Basin, the list of names they use to name these systems is different than the list for the Atlantic. So you have two separate lists. Uh, so you'll have two separate naming systems for the Pacific and for the Atlantic systems. But when the systems do develop in the tropical Pacific, once again, we have a semi-permanent high-pressure system in the North Pacific, and that tends to direct an east to west flow here, or trade winds, you could say, and that tends to direct most of the tropical systems that develop in the equatorial Pacific in the direction of Hawaii and away from the southwestern U.S. Now, every once in a while, there's exceptions to every rule, right? Every once in a while, you can get jet stream energy that can plunge down and that can temporarily change the flow in this part of the uh, eastern Pacific to a more south to north, and that does occasionally happen where tropical systems, tropical cyclones will develop and and they can get diverted up toward the Gulf of California, up into Mexico. The remnants can even rain over portions of Southern California and Arizona. And actually, that was the case in 2023 when Hurricane Hillary made a northward track toward Baja, California. It weakened to a tropical storm and made landfall about 200 miles south of San Diego. From there, its remnants moved over the southwestern U.S. So then you may think, okay, is there a scenario where it could get one of these systems moving up to the Pacific Northwest? And very, very unlikely is the answer because as these systems, the ones that rarely do make it this far north, they're usually in a state where they're uh, basically weakening and they're transitioning from a tropical system to just a general storm system that we would see farther north. On top of that, the common flow uh, at mid-latitudes where we are is west to east. That's why jet stream energy kind of brings systems in 
for in from west to east. You ever notice that? Storms commonly come in from west to east or southwest to northeast or northwest to southeast. That's because, again, the common flow is west to east with our jet stream energy. So very, very difficult for a system to fight that and actually make it up to the Pacific Northwest. Now, we do have waters, but the water temperatures, uh, similar time of year, early October, 50s and 60s, much too cold for a tropical system to develop anywhere near the Pacific Northwest coast. Now, if we take a step back, you can see the water temperatures are a little warmer back here. So could it be possible a tropical cyclone could develop maybe southwest of us? And the answer is not likely as well, because we do get these jet streams of energy that come through here. We call them atmospheric rivers, and they're commonly rooted in the tropics. That would be called the Pineapple Express. You've heard that term, right? But this jet stream energy that brings those rainy weather patterns, that is a type of setup that would interfere with any sort of tropical development. In other words, tropical cyclones tend to develop when the weather's quiet all around them. So when you get all this jet stream energy, it tends to uh, keep those systems from being able to organize. So we'll get our own types of storm systems, and they will include atmospheric rivers. We'll get storm systems rolling in from the northwest. But in the Pacific Northwest, I don't see anytime soon us receiving a tropical cyclone. But never say never. There could be some uh, bizarre setup where we could see a tropical system push a little bit farther north into California, but I don't think it's going to happen here anytime soon. So for now, we'll head into winter and we'll be tracking some of those Pacific storms.